So some of you mentioned you saw me last, last August here uh, for my HIPAA presentation. Hopefully glean something from that. Um, we do quite a bit with healthcare. And actually, we use Cisco Meraki almost exclusively for most of our healthcare clients for the reasons that I will actually show off during the presentation here and you know, a lot of the benefits that we've been seeing with the product. Um, so just to make it clear, I don't work for Cisco. I got no kickbacks for doing this presentation about the product. Um, I have no Cisco stock as far as I know invited my investments. Um, I, I purely wanted to do this presentation really to show off as a break fix shop that has is still transitioning into an MSP uh, even to this day. Really, what are the benefits? What are the solutions that we're able to um, get from this uh, stack, from this vendor um, for our client sites? And um, you know, really how it's helped us. Uh, you know, we're a small company um, based out right over here in the Chicagoland area. And with those limited resources, we have to make decisions. And you know, we really made a decision early on, you know, about uh, six, five, six years ago, to kind of streamline ourselves onto Cisco Meraki for our various client sites. Not to say we don't use Ubiquity, not to say we don't use Netgear or some of the other vendors out there, but uh, we're really trying to standardize as much as we can on this solution stack. What was before Meraki for you guys? For us, it, it was a mixture. We are kind of still playing around and figuring our way out. SonicWall, um, Cisco Small Business, like their RV series I was using back in the day. So I was really trying to get a feel for what would really work for us and you know, seeing what other clients had deployed that we brought on and what they were using. So really I was in a test them all kind of period just to see you know, what we really liked. So I had no really solid standard. I would say Cisco's RV line was our predominant product that we were deploying, but we had so many issues with it. We were embarrassing ourselves in front of clients between load balancing and, and having to manage thousands of credentials to get into all these units. And I was like, we've had enough. And I'm gonna share some of that um, here today. Um, so if you didn't look up during the conference, there's none in this room. Uh, but if you did notice the access points being used here, they actually are Cisco Meraki. Um, it's only a coincidence um, that that was the case. I did not know Virgin um, was using Cisco Meraki, but um, if the Wi-Fi experience has been good for you, during the conference, um, it's their product that uh, is deployed over here. So, uh, you know, I did a few speed tests in my room last night. I was hitting about between 50 and 65 megabits uh, on my speed test. So, um, you know, pretty decent speeds, and I've been pretty happy this weekend. But again, what I'm seeing here is consistent with what I see across the client sites where we deploy this. Um, and, you know, that's one of the big things. Consistency is one of those aspects that I really enjoy um, from the product. Uh, so a little bit about me. I, a few of you already you know, know me, but I run a, a seven-person MSP out here in the Displains area, so we cover the whole Chicago metroland area. Um, I've now been doing IT in, uh, between the private and public sectors for over 14 years. I used to do IT for one of the suburban school districts before I uh, started the company FireLogic, um, and I've actually been doing IT since I was a junior in high school, so I have really deep passion I'm an infrastructure geek, so I love networking, I love servers, I love all that stuff. Um, but there's you know, a lot of fringe benefits and reasons we went with Meraki to simplify the things that we need to do with our technicians to be able to scale this on a level like we wanted to uh, from, from early on. Um, I've got a bunch of certifications, Microsoft, Google, CompTIA, not going to name them off. Uh, I am a court approved technical expert witness here in the state of Illinois. Um, I'm, I'm CompTIA's uh, technical advisory committee, so I do a lot of work with their A+, uh, Network+, Plus, Server+, Plus, Cloud+, Plus exams, and helping build those out for all the up-and-coming te technicians um, out in the industry. Um, I'm a pretty uh, frequent contributor to MSP Insights and Bar Insights, two magazines um, that you guys may read. Um, and I was actually academically published in the Journal for Social Era Knowledge uh, back in 2014. So, outside of my tech career, um, I'm a part-time landlord. I have some properties here in the city uh, that I manage. Uh, I like playing my Xbox. Uh, I love hockey. Been playing hockey most of my life, um, and I live out in Park Ridge, which is just next door to Displains, where our, uh, our main office is. Uh, so for today, for our presentation, my presentation here, I wanted to cover a few main things, um, and really. 
one of the biggest aspects of what I want to get through to you guys here today is not what's all the nuts and bolts. This isn't a sales presentation. You want that, you can call a Cisco Meraki rep and you can talk the nuts and bolts with them. I really want to share, you know, what are some of those solutions that we've been able to enable for our clients and how this fits into RMSP and how it could help you guys with your businesses and, you know, really see some of those benefits in terms of training time being reduced, being able to standardize on a single solution stack, and really reducing some of those things that I see as being problems with legacy networking, pretty much most other vendors out there. Uh, were any of you guys at the data presentation just now? No. No? Okay. Well, they were talking about, they're going a very similar path with their networking line as Cisco Meraki did, but Cisco Meraki has been doing it now for over 10 years. So they're kind of, you know, hope they don't hear this, but a little late to the game. And most of what I was hearing during that presentation I mean, Meraki, we've been doing that with Meraki for since 2014, so it's really not new to me, even though it may be new to a lot of other people out there. Um, and really one of the key things is networking being made turnkey. That was one of the hardest things, and you guys may even share some of those same problems of, you know, unless you're standardizing all on SonicWall or WatchGuard or Fortinet or one of these other platforms, and they, think still, they still have some problems as well in terms of not making... Uh, these solutions as easy as they could be and um, it takes a lot of training to get your techs especially your junior level techs up to speed to where they need to be to be able to manage this and handle this on a day-to-day -day, um, basis you know I, I don't think there's many MSPs that are willing to have full-time level three engineers on staff being paid 70 80 90k a year just to be able to manage problems and troubleshoot problems with their networking stacks at client sites so um, another area another way that um, Rocky uh, really helped standardize that and really solve that problem for us. Um, I'm going to go over some of the benefits that we see day to day, and we use this at so many client sites. I'm going to share a lot of those aspects uh, with you guys so you can see, hey, maybe those are problems you're having uh, at some of your customer locations. Uh, and at the end, hopefully we've got a little bit of time, I'm going to open it up for um, a little Q&A as well, and you guys can ask me uh, whatever you'd like. Uh, when it comes to talking about Meraki, um, I don't want to fall into that trap of with what a lot of IT guys fall into in terms of just worrying about the nuts and bolts. Um, and, and I wanted to bring this to the forefront to say, as business owners, as MSPs, we need to be really focusing on the uh, on, on making network gear, networking gear act as a solution to business problems and not just merely looking at it as cool features and all this neat stuff, because again, at the end of the day, it really just comes down to being a means to an end for our various clients. Uh, so a little bit of by the numbers, just really quickly about what we've done with Rocky in terms of being a solution stack for our client sites. We started using them uh, back around mid-2014. I've got over 100 production networks deployed here across not just the Chicagoland area, but remote. I've got clients in California, Texas, Michigan, New York, uh, multiple different states. Not all 50, but we're slowly, slowly getting there. And again, with the ease, I can manage them just as easily for any of those remote clients as I can do for my clients here in downtown Chicago. And that's a really, really big thing that I didn't have before in my other, um, my other solution stacks. Uh, I've got over 300 distinct pieces of Meraki gear out deployed at customer sites. Here's two things that a lot of people are shocked by. I spent zero and have to charge clients zero dollars in new hardware Wi-Fi controllers for anyone that's used Meraki for Wi-Fi, and we've had to charge zero in VPN client licensing to be able to use client VPN connectivity. Uh, if you're using Cisco, you need to pay for that licensing. I think SonicWall has very comparable licensing. You need to pay for it to use the, the software-based clients. Meraki charges nothing for that, and you can have as many users out there using client VPN um, as you'd like uh, for your client sites that, that use their, their firewall. So that was a big thing for us and one of the ways that we were able to show the value out to our clients and say, hey, you're not spending another 5000 on a, on a Wi-Fi controller. It's actually built and baked right into that cloud-managed cloud solution that they offer. Um, we have a lot of different verticals that we use. I said healthcare that we're using Meraki in. Um, a lot of hospitality, I won't name them, but a lot of bars and restaurants. If you do visit any of those places around here in downtown Chicago. We have about uh, a couple dozen hospitality and, and bar locations where we have full Meraki stacks in, in, um, deployed there, and we have relatively few calls on um, issues that we have at those sites. 
Um, and I can say as of today right now, uh, while majority of our clients do not have a full Meraki stack, it's hard to sell some of the higher end uh, switching gear, especially as it is more expensive, but over 75% of our commercial clients are using at least a Meraki firewall, and that's really always our foot in the door to be able to get that firewall in there. Then we move on to Wi-Fi, and if we can, also get the switching in place too. So the day that started my journey of really trying to change the dynamic and, and really is the day that I started pulling my hair out with legacy networking and the way that a lot of us know it. Um, I had a client, this was probably about March or April of 2014, and we had a situation happen where they said, hey, we're gonna have a branch office opening up in one of the other suburbs in Chicago. And they also said, by the way, the same weekend, we want to go live with a product on Microsoft Azure. I think they had some virtual machines that were going into production that weekend. And of course, you know, my armor was thick, my bravado was heavy, and I said, sure, we can all make it happen and, and no problem. So I think one site had an RV firewall from Cisco, uh, the branch office, they got gifted a sonic wall in some way. So we said, okay, we'll work with it and we'll, we'll get this thing deployed. Uh, and of course, when you're working with Azure, you've got Azure VPN, you've got their native networking um, stack that you need to deal with to interconnect that if you're going to do site-to-site -site VPN. So um, it was, you know, we had to go live by the weekend, and of course, we dive, dove into it, thought we were going to get it up and running quickly. This was like a Wednesday or Thursday uh, that we started working on this, and I almost lost my mind. I got, got on the phone with one of them. They told me that uh, that Vermer version would not work with SonicWall on the other side. And of course, the other party told me we're aware that there was a Cisco VPN bug. So both of them were kind of pointing the finger at each other. I couldn't get those VPNs working. I had problems getting, I think, the Sonic wall to work with Azure and get a VPN tunnel that was stable to that. And it was nuts. I was looking bad in front of the client. I was putting my name and reputation on the line. This is actually someone that because of the situation, um, we ended up fixing it and getting them up and running. But we did lose this client. You know, we really embarrassed ourselves in this situation, and this was really the time I said, I cannot manage a company and use the, this disparate set of gear with all these different vendors and look like a professional. So this really was that turning moment for me. Lo and behold, one of my industry colleagues at the time you know, told me about Meraki. I really didn't know too much about them. I heard about them just briefly, but I was in a panic mode about this. And I really asked him, I told him, hey, is, this, is Meraki something I'd be able to use? And he thought it was a good idea. Uh, I ended up getting on the phone with a Meraki rep um, with his help. And I told him about the situation that was going on. And lo and behold, uh, you know, here's pretty much what he told me. Uh, um, you know, we have auto VPN and they also have native uh, Azure VPN support as well. So, um, you know, thinking back on that, uh, we were able to go ahead, we standardized both the branch office locations on two MX firewalls at the time. We were able to get the tunnel up to uh, Microsoft Azure and get that stable. Uh, and one of the cool technologies that we still use day to day with Meraki is this thing called Auto VPN. You don't even need static IPs at branch offices. They have a built-in integrated host name service that they manage. You get as part of your licensing and you can do VPNs with just one click. Choose which site you're going to do a VPN with, include it as part of your, your VPN uh, tunnel configuration, turn it on, save it, establish this tunnel to that. They have native Azure profiles where you can turn that on and just the step, put in and configure your destination addressing up to Azure. And as with a lot of things with Meraki, it just works. I didn't have to think about it. We were stable. The client in the end was able to get up and running. Um, they didn't like how long it took and how big my bill had to be in light of all the troubleshooting we had to do. But, you know, it really was a turning point. It was a lesson for me. And, you know, this was really what led me down the path to really start thinking about, hey, what is really wrong with the way that we're doing networking as we know it? Um, for us, that was, you know, again, 20, mid-2014, and I started thinking about this. So firmware upgrades. So what you guys are doing, firmware upgrades on a scheduled basis, and all your network gear deployed out there on a consistent basis. Yeah, I'm not. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Neither were we. And they right? even told me, don't don't put on the newest firmware on, on the new when it comes out. Wait a few months yeah. and then put it on. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I And the problem with that is I'm going to go over to one of the other slides is now, if you were a part, was any, were any of you at the cyber insurance presentation, cyber risk presentation downstairs? Yes. Did you hear what they were saying about, I actually included that in my presentation this, this morning. Declined. You're going to get declined if you don't have a reasonable patching schedule that you're following 
And if you're following what the vendors are saying, if wait a couple months, your cyber insurance provider is probably going to say, that's not good enough for us. Yeah. So it's like you got two sides that you're battling here. Luckily, with firmware, and when it comes to Meraki, I'm not dealing with command prompt. I'm not dealing with version numbers that have issues between each other, which one needs to come first or second. I schedule it on a web dashboard for myself. It pushes on the times I want it to, and I see a full change log of what went in. If I want to roll back, I can do that all on my web portal as well. So firmware upgrades, the hell that it used to be, over when it comes to how Meraki uh, is doing it. So staff onboarding. Do you guys have more than a couple guys? How many guys do you guys have? Um, four for me. Four for you? Yeah, one guy. One guy? Okay. Um, so when it comes to onboarding, we have, uh, besides myself, I play about a half a technician. I have four other full-time techs. Every time I need to terminate someone or bring someone on, I mean, what does that look like? What kind of craziness do you have to go through and changing all those passwords for all those client sites and then giving new credentials out for a new person to every single site? It's crazy. It's, and the larger you get, the more client sites you support, the more unsustainable that becomes. So this was another nightmare that I had really no way to solve until I was able to move into a Meraki stack. The other thing is, again, training all your uh, technicians and yourself on all the different solution stacks that you're doing. And again, it is really nothing more than a situation of spinning plates in multiple hands and feet and hoping that everything um, you know, doesn't topple over. So. Uh, again, not to say that you know Meraki would be the only thing that an MSP would use. Of course, you need to be um, up to date and know how to work decently with a lot of different uh, vendors out there. But if I can say, hey, 80%, 90% of my client base is on one solution stack and all my technicians are trained on, how much less headache is that for you uh, from you know for, for, as a business owner? <clears throat> Here's another thing. And I hate really harping on Ubiquity about this and Unify, but Dano did it themselves uh, during their presentation. Um, anyone that's worked with Ubiquity, you guys work with Unify, Ubiquity at all? It. You haven't touched it? Like it? We do. You do? Yeah. Have access. you ever done support with them? Uh, there is no support. <laughs> there is no chat. support. You have to chat. You, you have to chat. Have you have to chat. Yeah, so we were just embarrassed by that in a recent situation. Of course, it was a budget conscious client, and they said, no, 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 I want to go with Unify. Don't run Meraki. It's too expensive. Uh, well, they wanted to do gig uh, gig service with AT and T, so and that gets expensive on Meraki because the throughput you just can't hit. But Unify, of course, says we can do it. Uh, so lo and behold, we tried to install their USG Pro firewall at the customer site, and we couldn't hit gig service. We couldn't get it. We were getting about 400 to 600 megs, no matter what we did. We followed all the tips everyone was saying on the message boards, and still couldn't get to work. So. Of course, we had a chat with Ubiquity to try to get that fixed, and it was just back and forth. They were saying, oh, new firmware's gonna come out in two weeks. Okay, so we leave the customer site, we go back, we try the new firmware, we just couldn't get it to work. So this was weeks and weeks, on and on, and again, we looked bad in the situation, but the client insisted they wanted to go Ubiquity and, and really wanted to use it, so you know, we did what we had to do. Uh, but again, no phone support from them, and they're not the only ones. Cisco Small Business has uh, pretty pitiful support, and some of the other vendors, similar as well. Um, so again, Meraki a little more expensive. You do pay for that support through the licensing that you need. But when I call them, I get someone from the U.S. Um, call center. Most of them are engineers, and it's pretty darn good support that I'm getting, uh, as opposed to waiting on emails and waiting on web form responses uh, to come through. Uh, so here's another thing: monitoring and looking at change logs of what is being changed at all these different client locations. I know monitoring is. Not as tough as, as having unified change logs. A lot of the time change logs are falling on us to make sure that technicians are doing that. Most techs are not doing that, right? As much as you ask them to go ahead and document that and say what they did, they're not doing so. When it comes to Meraki, any client network that I have, I have a unified change log. I know which user did it, when they did it, what settings they changed, and I can roll back and I can read through that and I can roll back those changes if there was anything that was done that was harmful, that wasn't good for the production network. So I see that history going all the way back from to when the network was deployed. So very powerful and, and, and a very awesome feature that saved us many, many times. Uh, and again, the monitoring aspect, the more parts of that network stack that you can get onto Meraki, the more items you have in that single pane of glass that you can go ahead and look at clients, how they're interacting with the access points, switches, what kind of errors are transpiring on that network where, okay, maybe your RMM collects some of that data, but you know, usually you don't have a 100% single view that's collecting all that information, allowing you to act on that. So that's another big thing that uh, Meraki really changed. Uh, 
another item that you know we deal with with these legacy stacks is all the different extra devices we have to deal with. Meraki doesn't have hardware Wi-Fi controllers. If you use their cameras, you don't need physical NVRs. It records right in the camera, and you can back that up to their cloud data centers. I don't know of any NVRs that can do that yet. Um, and also IPS appliances. You can do intrusion pre prevention and detection right from their firewalls just with a, a license level switch um, for the actual device. You don't need anything extra. All their firewalls can do that natively these days. So some of the conclusions I came to for all this, it was unsustainable to keep doing this. The way I was handling networking, too complex. And of course, it was too hard to keep everything patched as we talked about. There's no sane way that you can do that um, and keep all, everything secure. As we know, a lot of these criminals and attackers are getting into things. Uh, what was it, the, the, the big, um, the big the crack attack happened as well, but there was the big one where they were running the ransomware uh, botnet off of routers they broke into yeah, because yeah. the firmware was That's just still, not cached. I'm sure it's still happening. I'm sure it's still happening, yeah, because all those routers are probably still out there. So, uh, again, a, that's not something I ever have to worry about for any of my clients that have uh, a Meraki solution stack. So, how did we change the picture when we started using Meraki? One of the first things that uh, is, is built right in the solution, and one of the things that they uh, really pioneered from the start as a cloud-managed network stack. Not an afterthought like Unified does it with their cloud, con cloud keys and cloud controllers that you can buy and tack into your network. This is truly, uh, truly was started as being cloud-managed right from the beginning. Everything's hosted in their data center. All their Wi-Fi controllers are cloud-hosted. Um, so I don't have to worry about installing that additional gear. They maintain it, they support it, and they keep it fully patched uh, and up-to-date. So all my technicians, when they need to access any of our client networks, they're doing it mostly from the web browser. You can do it from mobile devices too. Meraki has an app. Uh, it's not super stellar. Most of the stuff is done better via the browser. Uh, but you can get access to everything, at least do monitoring and view status on your networks through mobile and, of course, via web browser. And one of the most powerful tools that Meraki has is one single login that we use for all of our client locations. And that's their work email. So anytime a technician's onboarded, their work email becomes their Meraki login as well. And they use that and we assign them, our senior, my senior tech doles out access to all of our Meraki networks that we have. And that login becomes their entry point, their authentication mechanism to get in to every single client <laughs> location. They have two-factor. All my technicians are forced to use two-factor on that. You don't get two-factor with most other uh, access into uh, more legacy style firewalls. So that's a big thing. I don't have to worry about a criminal gaining access into our net client networks because we are protecting all those logins with two factor. And that single account, again, I can give them access to different client sites. I can give them full access to be able to make any changes on some networks. If they're more junior tech, I can say, hey, maybe you have access to make changes on one of the networks within that client organization, but some of the other high stakes ones you can't. You can only do read only. So I can get very granular with what I give out to those um, technicians based on their position, based on what they have to have access to, um, and what's needed of them. Uh, go can ahead. Can you give clients access? You can give clients access, yeah. Yeah, we have many clients where clients want to be able to go in and make changes. Some of them say, hey, I just want to be an, an admin that's read-only, so I don't want to screw anything up, but they want to see licensing, they want to see, you know, they want to go in when they want to just to go look at it, so that's one of the things that we do. We give out to almost every client at least one read-only login uh, to their site. And when my technicians log in, of course, our list is long, but you see a page like this when you log in, and you have all your organizations listed out on there. You click on the one you need to work in, and you have full access into that cloud dashboard for every single device that's Meraki branded there. So this is what that looks like. My technician logs in. This is our actual uh, headquarters uh, network. So an organization can have multiple different networks within it. In ours, I have my home office. I have... Uh, my mom's house in there, even though I shouldn't. Um, so all the different ones you can stack up in there and get access through it through that main organization. And all the different devices that are in there you can get access to right in the left hand pane. So our firewall from the security area, switching you can get access to. We have two switches by Meraki in our office. Our sole access points at Meraki, so that's there. And we also are standardizing Meraki cameras as well. So I have a test camera and our, over our reception desk, and we're changing out the other access cameras to all Meraki uh, within the next month or two. So everything that's core in my network infrastructure, I have access to right within a web-based dashboard anywhere in the world, as long as I have internet. Uh, so just really quickly, Meraki licensing, how it works. Not going to spend too much time on it. 
Uh, all devices that are in Meraki set up need to be licensed, okay? So that's one of the big things that is different than some of the other competitors. Some of them, licensing is like, uh, you should have it, but you don't need to have it. Uh, with Meraki, you do need to have everything licensed, otherwise you're going to uh, run out of compliance and you risk having the network shut down on, uh, because of that. Access points and cameras have one license that all of the different SKUs share, so you don't have to worry about uh, matching that to a particular SKU, but the firewalls and switches have per SKU licensing um, that you need to look up and purchase with the hardware. Um, and firewalls have two different kinds of licenses per SKU. One of them is the regular license that gives you access to everything, all common stuff that a firewall will do. But then you have advanced security. We use that at uh, like our bars and restaurants that need PCI compliance, uh, medical offices that need HIPAA, and that enables us to do some of the cool things like intrusion detection prevention. Uh, they have built-in malware filtering at the uh, WAN level. I can do content filtering to uh, keep people off certain kinds of websites or website categories. And another favorite feature is geo-based IP rules where I can pretty much block off whole countries like China, Russia, Far East, Europe, things like that from accessing that client network and not even the putting them on the map uh, in terms of being an attack surface. Um, Meraki licensing allows you to get 24-7 phone-based, I should have put phone in there, phone-based U.S. Uh, support uh, at any given time. They're very good. We use them every single week and, and they do a very good job compared to some of the other vendors. Next day air RMA, access point goes down, firewall goes down, call them up, hey, we got a dud. They next day air replacement either to you or to your client's office and you can put that replacement in. Uh, pretty quickly. So a lot better than some of the other RMAs with other vendors where they want to do a replacement where you ship in the bad unit, you wait a week, they ship you the replacement. I can't deal with that kind of downtime. So this is a really, really big thing for us. Not to say we get a lot of hardware failures. It's very, very low. But the once or twice a year we do have it, it really saves our rear ends and we look really good. Automated firmware upgrades, I'll go up over that just a little bit later. Um, and of course that cloud dashboard access for limited users and techs. So you can put as many people, as many techs, as many Client users, or if you have an uh, organization you support that has an IT staff, we have shared access into their networks, and again, we can work as one cohesive uh, unit with those devices. So one of the benefits that um, we use on a day-to-day -day basis, remote troubleshooting. I don't need to have techs that are doing VPN connections in, to log into that firewall, to look at those status pages, they log into the dashboard, and we can get access to all these different tools right within that uh, firewall through the web browser where I can do remote pings and see what um, if I'm having any kind of uh, ping drops to a particular IP address or web, or web address. I can reboot that device really quickly for myself. Um, I can do trace routes right through the web interface, DNS lookups, ARP tables. Um, so again, very, very useful for us and any Meraki firewall that you have cloud access into, you can do all these various things within one click. Content filtering, if you have an advanced security license, you can do category-based filtering or site-by-site -site whitelisting, blacklisting for the organization. So again, very simple GUI-based um, panel. You can go ahead and set up the different content filters that you use, save those, and client, any client on the network will be given an um, a error message like that uh, regarding having the website blocked. So can very you easy. Can pop your logo on that block message? Um, I think you can customize it. We haven't customized uh, that, honestly. Uh, in any networks, but I think you can go ahead and edit uh, what that text shows. You must have your picture on there. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You went somewhere you shouldn't have. <laughs> uh, segregated guest Wi-Fi. Uh, one of the nice things about Meraki is they have a feature um, where you can go ahead right with their access points, and you can have secure guest Wi-Fi just with a few simple steps. You make the guest SSID for yourself, set up the password naturally, and they have a firewall app for each single SSID you deploy where you can deny local LAN access for any client that's part of that SSID. No VLAN even needed. So if you don't want to even deal with VLANs on that customer side or can't because you don't have managed switches there, you can still do segregated guest Wi-Fi. So very, very big, especially if it's in the smaller offices where I haven't been able to get managed switches uh, out into. Integrated IPS, IDS, malware filtering. Again, if you have the advanced security license, you have access to be able to use their uh, advanced malware protection or AMP. Cisco sells that separately as a license or part of their umbrella suite. You get access to it right on your firewall if you have an MX uh, from Meraki. So you can do malware filtering on there. They have a nice security dashboard if you have IPS turned on. 
what parts of the world where, that you're getting hit with, with threats. You can see what your top threats are, what your top clients are that are getting attacked by various things. Uh, very useful, especially after we deploy country blocks like China, Russia on that. We go in here and we see where all those different things that were blocked right away just by turning on uh, those, those um, simple items. And the definitions on here, they update hourly. So they're very aggressive and, and they're pushing out those updates on a very quick basis. So again, the security levels are being kept uh, at a very, uh, a very top notch. Here's that feature I was talking about with country blocks, advanced security license on an MX firewall. Uh, we do this almost across the board of all of our client sites. Uh, this is not our, one of our clients. This was just an image from Rocky showing off this feature, but we can say deny all traffic that's to from any of these countries that we can list in here, and we put in most of the you know, common culprits out in the world, Russia, China, uh, North Korea, things like that. So again, you do not even show up on port scans. Any what traffic that's trying to go out to those countries or come in from those countries cannot even touch our uh, firewall appliance, and we're pretty much invisible from those nations. So again, reduces your attack vector down to here just with one simple uh, implementation and, and settings change uh, by using that. As we talked about, firmware patching really is not optional in 2019. So Meraki solves this by having a web-based GUI that you can use to do all your firmware upgrades. You can see all your devices if you go into all networks here. It'll show you all the different uh, wire access points and switches and all that. Show you what firmware version it's on. And it will show you if there's a firmware update scheduled, when it's going to happen, what, what day and what time. And if you want to push that up to happen sooner, you can click on the checkboxes and set it and have it happen as immediately as right now. And just push it immediately for yourself. So again, makes firmware upgrading very easy. We don't have to think about it. Most of our client networks, again, we just use the automated schedule built right into Meraki, and we've passed all PCI compliance checks that we've had at our customer sites to date uh, because of this feature. It's been very, very helpful. And again, it allows us to keep a very high level of security uh, with this. And as we talked about, as I heard just yesterday, the cyber insurance policies are now requiring the firmware be updated as soon as reasonably possible, I would think this upholds that um, definition quite a bit better than some of the vendors just saying, oh, just do it in a couple months from now. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Some of the other features that we have access to uh, because of the Meraki units, and again, not saying other vendors can't do it, but it's very easy in a web-based GUI to do these things. Load balancing, we can set that up across multiple ISP pipes. Uh, on any MX firewall, we can either choose to do a straight failover or a load balance if you have similar sized pipelines. Uh, you can do billable Wi-Fi splash pages, authenticate into an SSID with AD credentials. So you can get really fancy. They have all kinds of different options for how to get into an SSID. Um, so you can trust my that to your heart's content. SD-WAN, if you're doing anything with that, with uh, any of your VPN sites, you can edit that in a GUI-based editor. Uh, and one of the other nice things is they have VLAN editing that's in a, new, in a, in a GUI uh, style interface. So even my technicians that are more junior technicians, a lot of them are able to do VLAN changes on switches. This is actually a uh, photo I took from one of our switches at the office. That's exactly what it looks like. You can set the native VLAN, which VLANs are allowed on there, and whether it's a trunk or access port, again, very easy to edit, and you don't need to be a CCNA to do it. Um, and also they have uh, high availability, so you can do a staged... Uh, two MX firewalls for high availability. In case one goes down, the other will take over uh, in a very fast fashion. Uh, in terms of training, Rocky makes it really easy for us. So all my junior techs I put through CMNO so they can uh, gain access to be a, a Rocky network operator. Basically goes through and teaches them how to do everything within the web dashboard, how to configure everything, how to make changes within that. Uh, for some of my mid-level technicians, between 6 and 12 months, I put them through CMNA. Um, yeah, you actually have to go down to the Cisco office in your area, and you do that for a full day training. At the end of the day, you get certified as a CMNA. Uh, and then for every any level 3 engineers, there's an invite-only program called Rocky Masters, uh, very similar to like a CC, uh, NA, CCIE style uh, certification. So no one in my organization has that. We haven't been invited yet, but that's the top of the pecking order uh, that you can go through. Uh, so some of the biggest benefits that we've seen with the Cisco Rocky stack, tech training time, I've really been able to slash. I don't have to worry about training them all on all these different kinds of vendors that are out there and making sure that all my new technicians are up to speed on all that. So again, my training time has been gone considerably down uh, since I've implemented using Cisco Rocky for our client sites. 
uh, goes to say also that troubleshooting is also much faster. We don't spend as much time trying to find issues. We have that nice web-based dashboard. We've got access to phone support from Meraki. So again, troubleshooting time has really been reduced and we're able to solve problems much faster and move on to stuff that's more important. Uh, I did mention Rocky support on the phone. They are gold when it counts. Very, very good. All US-based engineers, you can understand what they're saying when you talk with them. So we really like that. Uh, hardware failure, especially compared to a lot of my ubiquity rollouts that I have, very, very low. Uh, I think we lose an access point or two every single year and maybe one MX firewall I've had uh, that died in one in the last three years. That's a lot higher than I see on some of those other vendors where I'm you know, having to send text out there a lot more often to replace that hardware. Uh, I have yet to ever have a device get bricked from a firmware upgrade, so knock on wood, hopefully it doesn't happen, but uh, we have a lot of devices being upgraded on a weekly basis, and I just do not see any bricks happening from that. So it's very stable and very mature at this point. Um, and again, what more can you ask for? It just works. You know, it's one of the biggest things that I get from the Rocky stack is I don't have to think about it, worry about it. Um, once we get that deployed at a client site, especially when we have the switching and the access points as well as the MX firewall over there, really the peace of mind is, is really, really high on those kind of client locations. Uh, another thing I also like is their NFR program. You get 80% off list for Meraki gear. If you're a partner, you just sign up with them. You have access to buy like twenty-five dollars or $30,000 worth of gear list price uh, every single year, but you get 80% off that price. So. Um, you're able to get like, you know, catalyst level switches for like 250, 300 bucks. I mean, dirt cheap. They want you to play with it. They want you to use it in your own network so you can get familiar with it and be able to, you know, properly work with it uh, for your customer locations. Nothing's perfect. Rocky does have a few downsides and I did want to lay those out on the table as well. Uh, as mentioned prior, licensing is required on Rocky for all your devices. Uh, if you go out of compliance, you have 30 days to get compliant with your licensing after that. They cut the switch, so the Rocky gear will come off. So that's one of the things that they do enforce. And one thing that technicians tell me, I don't like that, you know, if you lose your licensing, you're going to get cut off. Well, it's just the nature of the beast. If you were at the Dado networking presentation, their gear works very similarly to that. Due to the nature of it having to be controlled via cloud management interface, this isn't really ideal for any networks that may be air gap. I don't support any air gap networks. I don't know if you guys do, but it's pretty much like if you're supporting like a, 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 an energy power plant or something where they have a network within a network that doesn't touch the internet, this really wouldn't be very uh, beneficial or, or useful for a situation like that. So keep that in mind if you ever need to do anything uh, of that nature. Um, yes, it does cost more than the Netgears, the Unifies, and, and some of the other cheaper vendors out there. But again, hopefully some of the value add and the benefits I showed you guys really makes up for that difference of why it does cost more because it is a much higher end. It is an enterprise class product. It's not a small business, you know, really low level, best file style um, product. Uh, and the last thing I don't like is that it has to drop ship from a California warehouse. So lead times, unless you're willing to pay for next day shipping, a little longer than what I can get on some of the other gear that's stocked at the distributors, the DNHs, the Ingrams, things like that. So, you know, that's that's another downside is lead time. I have to make clients aware of that if we have emergencies, I keep a few Meraki items in stock, like one firewall and access point, so we can do a quick um, replacement of something that dies really quickly. Um, if we're if they don't have Meraki already, uh, but for most new projects, I tell people, you know, there's a lead time of about a week to get that gear to have it um, shipped in. Hmm. So. Um, there's your uh, network hell hole that <laughs> hopefully you don't have to go back to. Um, so you guys have any questions about it? Uh, easy question. We have a few first. minutes here. So the lowest end watch guard is the T15. Yeah. And with basically all the cool stuff, we're looking at about six hundred dollars um, for a year. Okay. On that. What would be the Meraki equivalent? Meraki equivalent to that probably would be like an MX64. Uh, firewall, uh, four port gigabit dual WAN uh, firewall. Uh, hardware probably is going to run about um, this is, you know your, what what you would get it for uh, probably about three eighty four hundred and then license um, probably another three hundred fifty bucks. So for comparable, yourself. very comparable in terms yeah. of cost. Um, and then so, so now into monitoring, uh, yeah. you, you glanced over that a little bit. Yeah. One thing that watch card it sucks. To yeah. Be honest. What is uh, it? There is no. The thing that's going on right now, right now that I see is this managed seam thing, you know, where, mm -hmm. you know, you are just blocking it so you don't have to even worry about it, it seems like. 
But, you know, I don't know if one of my customers has been hacked and there's traffic coming out of the network to China. Mm -hmm. So unless I log into Dimension or Traffic Monitor on each individual network, which means I have to peek in into their location yeah. Yeah. or be at my office and go in yeah. from there, and then I have to pull up Traffic Monitor and just sit there and watch logs. Yeah. Um, how, do, how does that work with, with uh, Meraki? So Meraki, uh, maybe I'll go back to that security center slide that I had. Um, yeah, so this over here, this was a screenshot I took from uh, security center. I think it was from our office, actually. Um, so within here, you can search by event. You can search and actually look at on a per client basis, see which clients were hit with what events, where that traffic traffic was coming from or going to. Uh, so again, if you wanted to dive into that and look at some of that detail, most of that is available right within here, within the interface. If you wanted to do go even further and do like a live packet capture, they have built-in packet capturing in here. You can capture that, and you can even analyze it in Wireshark for yourself if you want to really dive in and get into the weeds on that. Okay. So they have all that, could all that I, capability. Could we in. create an alert or something if there, you know, was traffic? Let's say there was. There's never been traffic to China, and then one day you yeah. start getting traffic to China. Could we create an alert around that? Or so something? I've personally not set up an alert like. Traffic coming or going to a country for the first time, you may be able to set up that account alert. They have all kinds of different alerts that you can configure, who will get them, what kind of alerts they are, and they can go out to users. Um, most common alerts that we have is when an internet pipe goes down, so we get alerted about that. One goes down, it fails over. When does it go back to the primary? We get that. We get alerts for a lot of our networks as well about high bandwidth, so if something's sucking 10 gigs over the internet line in an hour, we want to know that that's happening, so that might be a security breach or might be a Nest camera going out of control. We want to know about that. So those are some common ones that we're using uh, for our client networks. I see a Rocky. phone symbol on one of your slides. It was a firmware update uh, page is what it was, and it had a phone symbol. Does Meraki have, right there it is, does Meraki have phones? They have phones. Um, they dabbled in it, but they discontinued it. So, oh, okay. yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very few people bought the phones. We didn't buy into it as well. It was just it was too forward thinking, too soon, and they dropped the line. But they so they offer access points, switching, um, uh, firewalls, and cameras are their main hardware lines cool. today. And they also offer I didn't show off any of it, but they have a thing called Systems Manager for MDM. Uh, you can get up to fifty free MDM seats for any of your clients. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not entitled to phone support with it, but you can at least give it a try and trial it. Uh, we use it at a few schools that we support and uh, lo client locations like that. So we install it on iPads uh, and Windows computers and Macs and things of that nature. So, um, you know, they got their hands in, in quite a few different areas. These do they days. have a minimum? Uh, what do you mean? Minimum, minimum of of to become a partner? Uh, they do not. Thanks. They do not. I mean, you'll get the, the, the more you sell of them, like just like any other vendor out there, you're going to be entitled to higher staggered discounts as you sell more. But just to become a partner and get your foot in the door and be able to be entitled to NFR, I don't think I ever had a minimum that I had to hit just to be able to so try it. So you buy direct. You don't deal with distributors. Um, you have to go through distribution oh, to buy do? it. Yeah, you have to. Okay. You can't buy direct from Cisco. Ship it from but it ships directly from at Meraki's warehouse in California. Yeah. Uh, you just have to do fulfillment through like an Ingram or a DNH or someone like that. So, I see the open DNS sticker on that laptop. Yeah. So you use them as well? Um I do not. <laughs> I do not. So we use them as our some as DNS server on some of the public facing forwarders that we have out in production, but I don't use the which is now umbrella, I don't use umbrella service. Because any site where I have Meraki MX firewall, I'm pretty much getting ninety-five percent of what Umbrella has to offer already. So only thing I lose is if it's like a laptop that gets taken home, of course, umbrella protects it wherever it goes. With the MemX, I have to. You know, it has to be at a site that has an MX firewall. There's no uh, client. There's no. There's no client that runs on the device. So again, something that I'm looking to maybe stack on top of our Meraki-based solution and have Umbrella on some of those situations. But so far, I mean, the MXs have been solving 90, 95 percent plus of those security issues for us. So less licensing, less headache, less things to worry about that are out on devices. So uh, for us, it's, it's really been working well. Now. What are we? What are the? What's the pricing look like on the access point? So just the lowest end. Lowest end. MR33 access point. Uh, AC Wave Two uh, with three by three radio, I believe. Uh, with a with a one year license, that will probably run you about six fifty, okay. six hundred bucks, something what like that. Would the renewal be uh, renewal I, for a one year license is like sixty bucks, I think seventy bucks. So that's your bucks a year. Huh? Seventy dollars a year. Seventy bucks a year for the access point. Yeah, that's not bad. It's not terrible. Like I said, for getting next day or May, for getting firmware updates, for getting phone support, 
they get, they get a lot from the money from them. So. Anything else? You answered all my questions. <laughs> so hopefully you guys will give it a try. Hopefully it gives you, you know, what some introduction to it. And what? What is the learning curve for getting into compared to Sonic Ball, for Oh no! Geez. Come on. <laughs> Can you choose someone else? <laughs> a league's easier. Yeah, league's wow. easier. The web-based interface. Very easy to use. I mean, this is the same dashboard you're going to use for any single client site you have. You go in, you have menus for any different part of the area of the particular device that you're diving into and changing settings on. This is the same across the board, across their entire product line. So your technician learns how to do it in one site. They know how to do it on any given site that you support. So when you hire, are you the one that trains that new coming technician? Or do you I do it sometimes. A lot of times it's my, it's my uh, IT ops manager that's doing some of the training with me on that, so I'm personally not doing it a lot of the time. Um, How long do you put into it? For training a technician? Yeah. I would say a technician's about 80% functional in one month, month and a half. Not making high level configuration changes, but at least being able to troubleshoot, do basic items in terms of viewing settings on here, understanding what is going on in a given network, when, is, when, when I have issues uh, happening, things of that nature. So again, pretty functional for most call-ins that we get about what's going on in the network, barring VLAN changes, restructuring subnets, things like that. So, lowest barrier to entry that I've had from any network stack that I've put my hands on, really, bar none. It reminds me of the Open Mesh Cloud Tracks dashboard a lot. So Open Mesh is what Datto bought, and then Open Mesh powers, yeah, their, their networking solution. Yeah, exactly. So all the features they were talking about, I'm like, boy, Meraki's had that for yeah. <laughs> five years, six years, seven years already, so. Very similar. But again, I think a lot more MSPs are going to be looking at the cloud-managed route of either this, a data networking, or if another solution comes about, because the amount of things I've solved and the headaches that I've solved by doing and going down the rocky path nice. has really brought my confidence, my confidence level up, and I can bring on more clients, support more people with less hands. Yeah. And I don't have to have level three engineers doing all the work anymore. You don't have to and do the, And I don't have to do it all anymore either. Yeah. So, How it's been very nice. Cameras? Huh? How are their cameras? Yeah. Cameras are, are pretty good. I like them a lot. They have built-in SSDs that they store the footage onto, so you don't have to worry about buying an NVR, like I mentioned. And they have an optional license where they can back up all your footage up to the cloud, to their data center, for, I think, 90 days, 180 days, uh, or longer than that. So you have that backup functionality built in, which, again, I have, I've never seen an NVR that has uh, footage backup to the cloud. You just can't do it yet. But Meraki solved it. What? Are they usually POE? Yeah, POE, POE or POE Plus. So actually one of my apartment buildings in the city, we used all Meraki cameras. I got 10 cameras over there watching all the property and it's, it's worked outdoor. well. Indoor and outdoor, yep. Yep, all weather, oh, vandal proof. Dome, fish dome cameras, arm. they've got pendant arms for them, the whole nine yards. I mean, not as many endless accessories like Axis or some of the other established names, but for what they have three years into their camera line, good enough for everything I'm doing with it, so. So like same them. idea, you can license the product, well, you have to license You have to the license, product. yeah, every single item. And if yeah. you have a problem with the camera, they ship it to you next day. Exactly. If it's, a, if it's a hardware defect on the camera, or the camera's down, they will ship your replacement, and you just send back the dud. Back to them. And that's pretty good. So they stand behind their gear, and that's what I like about them. There's no wishy-washiness of, hey, wait for firmer release, you know, th three versions from now to try and fix it. If it needs to be replaced, they will ship the replacement, and you're not haggling with, with that with that rep on the phone. Do they so. collect any data of any of the hardware? Like, say you call tech support mm -hmm. and they have access to things, they can look at things on your... Yeah, they can go on your dashboard with you, but you have to give them your one-time passcode for the day within your portal. So every client portal has a one-time passcode you have to give to them, and then they can go ahead and they get, get into the um, cloud dashboard with you. Yeah. And they can work with you, they can help you change settings, things like that. So, again, working with support is pretty easy for them. I really like the tunnel thing. I, I spent an entire day... What's that, the VPN? I spent an entire day trying to get a tunnel up and going, and what it was is I, you know, I wasn't paying super close certificate to the, the certificate uh, key, yeah. and it was like one digit off from the one that I was using, and it took me all day to figure out that. Yeah. And so you well, just being up quickly. That was me. That was this. <laughs> and I said never again. Yeah. Never again. I'm gonna do that. So yeah, Auto VPN is a very cool feature, especially for places where they have 
uh, all their branch offices and even home offices. You can put in little Z series firewalls they offer that are like with license, like 400 bucks by 450. And you can have those tunnels going to all those places and it's all controlled by auto VPN. No static IPs needed. It's all just based on their dynamic hosting service. Wow. And it's pretty rock solid. I like it a lot. That's awesome. Saves a lot of time. The client doesn't have to pay for statics in places where you otherwise don't need them. I have no servers over there. All I need is a VPN tunnel so they can get back to the data center or whatever they need to do. So again, it's a little thing, but it goes a long way of giving, putting that value added in a discussion. So. They have an office in Chicago here? They do, yeah. They just opened an office probably about a mile away from here on the uh, southwest side of the city. Well, let me know how so. it turns out. <laughs> 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 I'm there, there one day. Yeah. So. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Really appreciate your time. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for putting all that together for us. Not a problem. It's nice to...